Hey everybody, welcome to another Facebook Live uh, and I guess YouTube Live and all kinds of stuff live with Gail and I. Um, we are with the Lipedema Project and Lipedema Simplified and we're going to be just talking about one of our great sponsors for our event that's coming up, our virtual event, uh, Heart to Heart event that's coming up in April 12, 13, and 14. So I'm Leslie Keith. I'm president of the board and director of research for the Lipedema Project. And I'm here with Gail, my friend and colleague, Gail Straker. And Gail, you are a, a woman of many hats as well. Oh, I, yeah. As much as I don't like hats, I am a woman <laughs> of many hats. And sometimes I think that my hats are either getting bigger or maybe they're just getting tighter. <laughs> no. It's getting tighter. Um, but yes, we, um, I'm the community manager and I do a lot of, um, scheduling of these lives. It seems like that it, we have a lot of lives and it, we do, we do speakers. And so, yeah. so we're really grateful that we're able to discuss what we're doing today. Yeah. And uh, so, as I said, um, today we want to talk about one of our featured sponsor sponsors for this heart to heart event that's coming up in April. Um, and that is Own Your Labs. And it's co-owned by our own Siobhan Huggins, who is a research specialist that does a tremendous amount of work with Lipedema Project. And she owns Own Your Lab along with Dave Feldman, which who you might have also heard of. Um, and um, we just wanted to chat a little bit about the incredible work that Dave and Siobhan are doing with Own Your Labs, as well as, well, you can see it's it's right up here now, that um, he's also the founder of the Citizen Science Foundation. And some important things have been going on with that as well. But first, a little bit about Own Your Labs. You got the link right there if you want to check it out. Own Your Labs, I think, started out because of Dave's Citizen Science. He was experimenting on himself and in order to see what the outcomes of his experiments were, he needed to check his labs a lot longer than his doctor wanted to order them, <laughs> or it took too long for his doctor to order them. And so he started this organization that you can own your own labs. You can order your own labs. They have a doctor on staff that okays those labs to be done. Um, and so it really gives you a lot of control. Now, there's a couple of states in the United States that don't allow you to do that. Just a few. I, I think it's I should have written them down. There's it, there is a couple. I think New Jersey is one of them. Don't hold me on that. Check out that website, ownyourlabs.com, and, and you can find out if if this is OK in your state. Um, Gail, have you done this before? Have you ordered your own labs? You know what? I haven't. I haven't ordered my own lamps, but I have dug around in there. Um, I was at the Citizen Science Foundation conference. Yes, you and that, that Dave organized. Yes, right, and that Dave Dave hosted and organized. He and his mm -hmm. and his wife. Oh my gosh, what an amazing conference! And I actually won a fifty dollar gift certificate to own your labs um, because I was on the leaderboard, and You're which on was the leaderboard. So Cool. We're doing that leaderboard also for our event. So check it out because it is kind of fun. You win neat prizes. You do. And I, so I got a $50 gift certificate from Own Your Labs. So here I am with my 50 bucks, right? And I'm digging around, <laughs> like, like shopping, wondering which labs should I put in my, in my shopping cart, in my uh -huh. shopping bag, right? Which labs would be really important for me to get, which, and I'm, oh, what do I, and so, I'm in there shopping. For lab. I mean, I know it just sounds so nerdy and geeky, but how cool. Like if I want a particular panel that my doctor says, yeah, you don't need it. You know, I wonder what my vitamin D levels are. Let's put my, that in there. Oh, I wonder what my insulin is. Let's put that in there. Wait, and maybe it's going to be different in, you know, can I get it? sooner can i get it yes. oh can i get it sooner and so with that we want to introduce you to dave feldman he's right well he was right there <laughs> yeah, here he is. Hi, 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 hi. anyway so 
Dave is <laughs> Dave from Own Your Labs is right here with us. We we're just talking about how amazing it is to be so, able to go. <laughs> and, and so, so Gail won that gift certificate at this the oh. uh, conference. The gift conference. And so she's going shopping looking for that. I have I have used it a number of times myself because, for instance, I do a carnivore diet, and I thought, hmm. I wonder what my vitamin C levels are on this diet. I mean, just, I mean, it's just fun to do. I don't get mind getting stuck with a needle. So I just pick one things that I'm curious about and I do it. And that's that your organization allows this to happen. We have control over this. I was talking a little bit about how it started out of your own wish to get repeated labs yourself. And it just was easier with, with your organization. Yeah. I mean, basically what happened was um, I was in 2015. I saw my cholesterol go through the roof going on a ketogenic diet and I was wanting to just iterate. I wanted to like change my diet, but not wait all the way until my next annual. I mean, I literally saw my blood mm -hmm. test uh, taken and sorry, by the way, I, I just did a whole bunch of errands and it's actually cold here in Vegas. Um, mm -hmm. I'm usually cold for Vegas. So I'm a little disheveled. But but it was um, it was great because uh, there were these online services and I'm not shy of saying who they are even though they're technically competitors to us now um, in uh, like requested test I just kept getting tests through requested test so I didn't have to wait until my doctor next time uh, but eventually I was able to um, get in touch with a low carb doctor was able to make these orders for me if I just paid him out of pocket so I then just started to do that. And uh, as you know, I would eventually connect with my very good friend and colleague, Siobhan Huggins, who, of course, uh, you mm -hmm. now are benefiting from her incredible genius to be able to help this out as well. Right. She, too, would do a whole lot of these experiments and iterate on her data. And we continued to report and share it as well as benefit ourselves from being able to do these tests. So um, it it became something where we're like, you know what, Let, let's just turn this into a platform so people could just go and order it just like those online services that I was making use of. Mm -hmm. um, but that we would go a step further and incentivize people to share their data as well, um, which we'll eventually be able to release in time. We're kind of excited about that also. And it just, it just, so you made it into a, a, a research platform as yeah. well as an ability to be able to, to get your labs and see what's going on just for your own curiosity or to pursue something that your doctor's not pursuing for you. Yeah. And li listen, I mean, of course, we're always going to recommend people work with their doctors. Mm -hmm. um, but to be fair, there are some things such as fasting insulin that I, I wish was a part of every standard panel that you ever right. do. There are inflammatory markers. I think a no-brainer for me is C-reactive protein. I too mm -hmm. wish that was part of every panel. And it not mm -hmm. always is for uh, every doctor. And, you know, again, please take any test you order or consider taking them to your doctor. But a lot of times I feel that uh, for some of us, these are important considerations for making decisions in our own life as to what kind of um, things we want to do with our diet or, you know, lifestyle such as exercise, how much that might further impact these labs. I'm just a big fan of higher frequency testing. I feel like we don't mm -hmm. test enough mm -hmm. and I feel like we don't understand what's going on under the hood as it were mm -hmm. uh, without being able to find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I just enjoy it myself. I, I maybe we're a strange breed, but I like, as, as, as Gail was saying, she's going through there and, and sh shopping <laughs> on your website and just putting, oh, I want to know this and put it in the cart. Oh, that would be neat. I put it in the cart. Um, it's just um, it's something that um, you can actually take a little bit more control about uh, over your health when you're able to find this information out. Yeah, I think it can never be said enough that um, and sorry, I do have a a camera that occasionally freezes, hopefully that got fixed. <laughs> At least you froze with a smile on your face. Yes. So. <laughs> I, think it, I think it can never be said enough that data come in a spectrum. And we don't always know what the data mean, um, but it's, it's nice sometimes. I, I do this myself. There's 
stole lab tests <laughs> and their own your labs that I myself haven't gotten, but I'm, I myself am interested in just being able to have that data in hand, even if I may have only gotten it um, once. Sometimes certain tests get a lot more interesting, um, mm -hmm. such as uh, sex hormone binding globulin. That's become like a lot more popular amongst many people. So I'll like watch a lecture or I'll read an article on it and I'll say, hey, is this something I can actually just order commercially? And if I can, you know, I become curious and then I do further research of my own. Um, again, I won't make decisions on medication or anything along those lines without consulting with my doctor. But that mm -hmm. said, there are a number of times where folks have um, found through doing some experimenting as well as also um, in checking out some of the, uh, the labs that we have that they have a thread they may want to pull on further to better understand what's going on with them. Yes. And I, I also find that there are just a lot of times where, you know, Siobhan's a great example. It, it's through her own self-experimentation that she ultimately, it led the way towards her understanding um, that she had lipedema and to ultimately get it diagnosed. This mm -hmm. came from doing a multi-day fast. That was an experiment of hers that she was getting frequent blood work for doing. And mm -hmm. In that way, serendipitously, I appreciate that this got her on track to understanding it sooner and uh, and to all of our benefits to ultimately helping work with you folks on making these great materials that are going to help out everybody else with lipedema yeah. as well. So we have been talking for some time about um, what can we do with um, with you as far as um, what blood tests we'd like to see women with uh, lipedema take. And so we're trying to put together some kind of package and then have it go into the research data that you collect at Own Your Labs. And so that's something we've been working on for quite some time. And I think that would be a huge benefit to the population, um, not only that for the individual that is getting her labs done with you, but when we put them together in an aggregate, we find out more about lipedema. Yeah, and, and not only are we interested in that, but an, a major change since we've last chatted, uh, even at the conference, is that we now have a full-time developer on board with Own Your Labs. Uh, we, we've been very excited because we've just enjoyed a lot of growth. Thanks again to everyone for their word of mouth um, mm -hmm. in helping to uh, build on the business and ultimately be able to have somebody who uh, is going to help us with those very things you're describing. We'd like to be mm -hmm. able to have... we. We just would like to facilitate this larger creed of citizen science because we mm -hmm. find it's been so invaluable in moving the ball and really trying to help us better um, understand all of these. Um, let me fix my camera one more time. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, help us, but <laughs> do I freeze it a second time? That's funny. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to just help us advance research from, you know, one of the things that I loved, and I'm really glad because you were able to make it to the conference, right? You were able to make it to COSA. Yes, yes. Yeah. both, both Gail and I, yes. Yes, it was it was great because I say this, um, it did better than we had any right for it to do. <laughs> it, we, got, we got so many people, and part of why I bring this up is because in that room, I'm sure you felt it like we did, wow what an interest that people had for this kind of collaborative science approach. Like we're so used mm -hmm. to kind of feeling science is off in this, you know, this, um, this set of labs that we're, we don't have access to and they report back to us what their findings are. And we have to kind of, we just have to kind of hope that guidelines that they, you know, put forward that are very one size fits all uh, can be something we can understand well enough and that our doctors can understand well enough that we can we can work off of that alone. When I think in reality, again, it's a spectrum. I think that we can do a lot of the forward work and take ownership of our own health because only we can to the degree mm -hmm. that we do. And mm -hmm. I just, I couldn't be more encouraging of people to just think in that manner. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. times things are, they don't have to be as methodical as some of the you know, in of one experiments that I've done, mm -hmm. um, they, they might be just as simple as, hey, I'm going to go, you know, one week without this food that I think is a problem food, get my blood work before I make this change, and then get my blood work after. 
And you'd be surprised just how much information you can get from that. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're just so thrilled to have someone like you and Own Your Labs be a sponsor of our event coming up in April. Um, it's, it's a three-day virtual event, Keto and Beyond, Customizing Your Plan to Joyful Nutrition. And uh, we hope it will be joyful for people. Um, but this is one way you customize it, is by getting your blood work done and seeing how your body responds to a particular style of eating what's happens to your inflammation uh, levels, um, you know, uh, how does our, our thyroids respond or, or various other hormones respond like insulin um, or um, estrogen or other things like that. And this is um, one of the ways that we help customize and figure out what's going to suit us the best. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously I'm, I think I've had something in the neighborhood of 140 blood draws total. And uh, my, um, unfortunately, it's not been uh, a single, a, a, a single, um, um, I, I don't want to say injection, but a single site each time. I have very inset veins. Uh, so uh, sometimes they have to do it multiple times. In fact, we're filming a documentary right now where there was one getting done on a set and the poor uh -huh. phlebotomist had to have a third time <laughs> she oh. wasn't able to do it the first two times <laughs> yeah but um but i now am uh, lipids have been definitely a central part of my research which certainly required blood work but just overall i have to say this journey and understanding how valuable blood work is overall has just been really exciting because what your body is doing with circulation will say a lot about what's happening to you. It's, it's a strong clue because it's kind of mm -hmm. like not just the communication network, but also how it's handling and how, uh, and how well it's handling the fuel that's moving around. You know, we, we hear the term metabolism all the time, like good metabolism, mm -hmm. poor metabolism, mm -hmm. health and so forth. Well, nothing quite tells you sort of what your metabolic status is than your blood work and how that's handled, mm -hmm. especially in a fasted state. If you've like mm -hmm. not consumed anything for 12 hours and let's say you have a lot of fuel, you know, parked in your bloodstream, like say glucose and, and triglycerides, that that is a clue as to how well your body is metabolizing those fuels. And um, a lot of, like I said, a lot of things also are just sort of is, are just kind of a, uh, a clue into investigating something further. Sometimes it's just a thread that you're pulling on uh, to right. find out more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we had a fabulous time at your conference and, um, and, and we know that the Citizen Science Foundation is doing wonderful work. You have a study that's been underway in, um, at UCLA for quite some time and, and we're getting some results from that. Um, and so, um, to be able to collaborate with someone like you, Dave, is absolutely fabulous. And um, I, please check out the information about our event down below. Come there, be able to meet Dave um, and at the event. Um, we're just thrilled to have you and Siobhan on board. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. And, and let me just say once again, I'm, I'm so appreciative of all the great work you guys are doing please keep getting the word out. I think this is just absolutely the most underdiagnosed condition by far for the prevalence that it actually is. It's, it's so, mm -hmm. it can never be stated enough that mm -hmm. this, this really needs to be, this needs to get on the radars of every single clinician out there, full stop. And yeah. uh, I, I appreciate all the good work you're doing to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. So we'll see everybody again. Gail, thanks for joining me here to be here with Dave. Thank you.